Right. But I mean, that's that's 100 percent proof right there that I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Alex, you, you and I know that that if you if you're coming out with some revelation that the government doesn't want, say something about 9-11 truth, you don't get the New York Times, the Guardian and Der Spiegel cooperating with you. Der Spiegel in particular had a whole cover story on conspiracy fanatics who turn the world upside down, 9-11 truth or lunatics, anti-Semites and and all the rest, rest of this uh, crazy stuff. A um, couple of other um, other things about it. Uh, he, Assange claims to be a Ph.D. According to uh, Madsen, this is from a, uh, a diploma mill. Uh, there was at, at the beginning of his career, he, he purported to come from Kenya. He apparently does not come from Kenya. He comes from Australia. There is this strange book that he contributed to underground tales of uh, hacking and madmen uh, in which Assange appears as the character Mendax, which is simply the Latin word for a liar. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, uncertain individual, a very, very uncertain group. They seem to work with... Uh, so he open... picks the name Darth Liar. I mean, this is... The, uh, boy, that tells you something. Something like that. Uh, and it's, it's a pattern, of course, right? Remember, ultra-left financiers of the Soros type love to sponsor ultra-left, the sort of subversive groups. Uh, you go to France, you'll see the main left-wing newspaper, Liberation, the main Parisian left-wing paper, is controlled by, it's owned by Baron Rothschild, and there have been all sorts of scandals about that. Well, look, so, I have George Soros every day with Media Matters that he's the main contributor to and others attacking me. Uh, and, and, and basically saying, I'm Satan. So this guy, I mean, we know that, that he's, he's active everywhere. Right. And, and then, and let's then look at, as, as you say quite properly, right, you've got to put in good information in order to get, to get some credibility. A couple of stories about this. I was in Iceland last uh, September, October, and uh, I had a chance to, to give a lecture series in Reykjavik uh, five nights in a row. I was on the main um, television uh, the news program on the Sunday, right, the Blab Show. And uh, what I was recommending and, and really calling on them to do is declare a, a debt moratorium. Freeze your debt. Stop paying your debt. Cancel your debt. Don't negotiate uh, uh, under the gun of the British and the Dutch and the IMF and the European Commission. But start by having a debt moratorium in the way that Mexico and Argentina and Brazil and about 35 other countries, down to Costa Rica, very small countries with no, no military, just like Iceland, have, have done it. Uh, and about a couple of months after I had departed, uh, into town blows Julian Assange, who goes, strangely enough, to some of the very same people and apparently tells them, forget about this debt moratorium stuff. What we need to do here is to have this internet free zone in other words a world haven for hackers for pornographers for other people on the internet and let's let's set that up and we'll have uh we'll make uh Reykjavik into the world mecca for all kinds all right, of stay there stay the there internet. stay there oh that's patriot jimmy vaughn bringing us in gotta get him in studio sometime to Play the guitar for us. Okay, let's go back to Webster Tarpley with us for another 35 minutes. I got a bunch of other issues I want to get into him uh, with. Let's, uh, in, the, in this five minute segment, finish up with the WikiLeaks. Uh, Webster, I'm going to sit back, finish up your points. On, on Iceland, and the, the, the net effect of the arrival of Assange in, in Reykjavik, Iceland, was, was to, uh, to convince a whole bunch of people who had started this debt moratorium agitation, which it seems to me is the only answer for the survival of the country, and go with this uh, gimmick, really, which was to say, let's, let's essentially act along the, the Soros program. Let's set up a, uh, a, a haven for Internet hackers, for uh, various uh, websites from around the world. We'll guarantee no, uh, no, no uh, uh, censorship or anything like this. So therefore, you, you see how the guy operates. Here's another one. Um, the Norm Coleman question, right? Norm Coleman was, of course, this senator from uh, Minnesota, in many ways a nasty fellow. I certainly didn't like him. But th there, was a, there was a fight between Norm Coleman and Soros over who was going to become the president of the World Bank. And Norm, Norm Coleman, well, Soros had his own candidate, a guy called Ford Malik Brown, Baron Brown. Uh, and uh, Coleman was opposing him. So this seems to have contributed to the to the huge amount of money that was put into that Al Franken campaign. But in the middle of that, there was also an intervention by WikiLeaks against uh, Norm Coleman. Right? They published his whole contributors list with with 
the many, many details of uh, of the individual lives of these these people. So that's they, extremely they suspicious. The Bank. So that's the idea. You you gain credibility with a lot of good information, and then you can put in the fake information that targets the people that you want to target for for completely different reasons. But of course, the big thing is. Pakistan, right? If you look at the, the London Guardian, right, which is the left wing of the British intelligence agencies, uh, you can see that their coverage focuses on two things, that the, the 90,000-odd uh, documents, very low-level, secret-level, essentially routine inter-office correspondence in the government labeled secret, these say Pakistan is treacherous, Pakistan betrays the U.S., uh, Pakistan is a bad ally, they stab us in the back, uh, and that then is giving rise now to this huge anti-Pakistani campaign, the attacks on General Gould and others, the demonization of the ISI, and so forth. Uh, but then also Iran, the Guardian focused on Iran, that Iran is, is fomenting a whole array of, uh, of insurgencies in, in their part of uh, Afghanistan along their border, and they're going to they're gonna keep doing that. So you're left with the idea... It's good. It's going to be a good idea to de-emphasize and downplay the Afghan war, and look now at your real enemies in the area, who are these two big states, Iran and Pakistan. And it seems to me one of the obvious things is to play one against the other, and that's a pattern that you see. The U.S. strategy in the entire Middle East is to try to line up a group of states that would be Arab and Sunni, plus a couple of others against Iran, which is Iranian, Persian, and also Shiite. Uh, and the big call for the attack on Iran, Iran that uh, you can read about in, in my essay that I, I put on the, uh, the Internet, and you have it also on, uh, on, on InfoWars, is that um, you've got uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, are, are uh, very, they've been, jazzed up by the U.S., obviously, to demand the attack on Iran because this threatens them. So they're, they're raising this hue and cry. The example, of course, is the, the ambassador from the United Arab Emirates in Aspen, Colorado, about two or three weeks ago, who went into a public tirade. We demand an attack on Iran immediately. What is this? We're willing to take the cost. You Americans get busy. This was at the Aspen Ideas Festival. So, all right, this is going on, and Wiki, the WikiLeaks feeds right into this agitation just at the proper moment. It's all very suspicious. Stay there, Webster. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Webster Griffin Tarpley is our guest. We're going to open the phones up when he leaves us in 30 minutes. The toll free number to join us, 800 259 9231. I want to get into the open discussion now. And the open green lighting of an attack on Iran. Does Webster Tarpley agree with Ahmed Dinajid that the attacks in the next three months? That's coming up. Also, I want to ask Tarpley about top Clinton official and advisor to Obama, Robert Shapiro, saying, hey, we need a staged terror attack. I'm going to read that quote uh, coming up. We're going to talk about the economy. We're going to get into other dirty tricks he sees the Obamanoids uh, pulling uh, as there's a major political realignment uh, taking place. But Webster Griffin Tarpley is our guest. Uh, I was actually going to ask Tarpley about this, and, he, and I was talking to him during the break. He brought it up himself. The similarities between WikiLeaks and Daniel Ellsberg, and I know Fletcher Prouty said he wrote many of those documents that, that when he was the head of black ops at the Pentagon, that the Rand Corporation then later put out through Daniel Ellsberg. And uh, Fletcher Prouty said that they'd been altered and were fake, and that it was a disinfo honeypot. Uh, and then Tarpley was just now agreeing with that during the break and saying there's similarities with this and WikiLeaks. Webster, let's uh, finish up with WikiLeaks and get into Iran. Go ahead. The, the big thing we hear from Assange is he says that he is the modern equivalent of Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers of June 1971. This was a, an internal history of the Vietnam involvement, Vietnam War, prepared really during the Johnson years but then leaked in a spectacular way with the help of the same New York Times and the Washington Post and the, uh, the Boston Globe in June and July of 1971, uh, which drove Nixon crazy. Uh, this was done by Daniel Ellsberg, uh, who for many leftists in particular, still a hero. I've never been able to understand this. Daniel Ellsberg was a nuclear weapons planner from the Rand Corporation. He had been part of planning the Vietnam War. He was a member of Henry Kissinger's 
staff in the White House, and then he had a Damascus Road conversion. He became anti-war, conscience-stricken, and released all of this stuff. And as you say, there was nothing new in these papers. Uh, if you had been reading Le Monde de France or any of the big Italian papers, you knew all this. I mean, I knew most of it myself just by, by having read these things. There was nothing really that new in it. But what it did do was constitute a leak which drove Nixon crazy. Nixon was, of course, a paranoid personality. Uh, and Nixon had been uh, extremely freaked out that same year, 1971. There had been a huge crisis between uh, India and Pakistan. This is what led to the creation of Bangladesh that year with wars, genocide. The Russians, it's now been declassified, came to the U.S. with a joint strike on China. And Nixon had said no as well.